Do you like monsters? Do you like Dungeons and Dragons? Do you like monsters and dungeons and dragons? Then do we have a show for you. Kill Every Monster is a bi-weekly DM deep dive into every monster in the manual. The first part is a discussion about creature mechanics and lore, and the second half is a one-shot AP where the guest takes on the role of the monster. Each episode of Kill Every Monster is a contained story, so you never have to worry about being caught up or listening out of order. Pick any monster you like and jump right in. For our Goblin episode, Michael Loving joined us and unleashed a dozen of his basketball-headed children upon a dwarven brewmaster. Our goal here is to steal some booze. Therefore, at this point, several kegs are just going to, like, sprout legs and start running out of the room at maximum goblin speed, a whopping 30 feet. The second that Vivek saw that, he would immediately let go of Rumble and go to try to stop the barrels from leaving. Which means we're going into initiative. Aram, cut cut around this, because this is going to be a couple of minutes. To find out more about the show and where you can listen, head on over to killeverymonster.com. And we'll see you next time for Kill Kill Every Every Monster. Monster. Hey, people. My name is Aram. My pronouns are he, him. And welcome back to God's Fall. This season, we are premiering each episode with a special video-enhanced version of the podcast. You can join cast and crew for a live weekly watch party Sundays at 8 p.m. Eastern on twitch.tv slash godsfall. Don't want to wait for more? We've got you covered. You can listen to the next episode right now by heading over to patreon.com slash godsfall. My name is Michael. My pronouns are he, him. I play Zion Preeton, the newly arisen god of force. My name is Doug, and my pronouns are he and him, and I play Doro Knot, the newly arisen god of travel. My name is Joe, my pronouns are he, him, and I play Lord Haldir Loran, the newly arisen god of war. My name is Kelly, my pronouns are she, her, and I play Rena Falaval, the arisen god of luck. Hi, my name is Niall, my pronouns are he, him, and I'm playing Torvik Wildtong, the arisen god of beasts. As soon as you hold it, so it's it's clearly a godstone because it's reacting to your divine energy, and you can hear a whisper in your mind as you hold it. I shall never be far. Well, thank you. Until until we meet again. Until the first time. And then the spiders just vanish. And Torvik doesn't even wait to speak to the priest. He just gets out of there straight away. Brother Tabak is right behind you. Oh, wasn't that wonderful? Yes, you spoke with her. And she gave you a divine gift. You are lucky indeed. (laughs) Torvik at this stage is like, he's, he's, he's flying. He's flying. Oh, he just takes off. He just takes off a fly. Goodbye. Goodbye. Is is the world storm still down? Is the wall still down? It's still down. And you said that while he was in the tent, he heard more cracking, like lightning. So he, honestly, he just wants to get back to the spirit garden now to make sure that well that's where the 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 impossible road is and that's where the direct shot to the union is and that's where well you know everyone kind of feared that that would be the point of failure if that was the worry and it does appear to be having problems (laughs) so yeah that's a fair bet he would like to stop at the caravan first uh to see that the, the message got to his kids An hour later, you're there. And frankly, like that bird didn't fly as fast as you did. So it got there about 20 minutes ago. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So they just had enough time to kind of react. So are the... Dad! Dad, 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 dad. He goes over and like he... Hi, dad. Gives a... Bear hug. (laughs) No, yeah. He gives like Morabi up in one arm and and, and, uh, and Javil in in the other arm. Not there. Uh, (laughs) So Javil's there as a bear. Morabi is not there. Uh, okay, so he goes over and he doesn't give him a bear hug. He puts his hands on the bear's shoulder. He's like, 
Javiel, where is Moravi? Oh, well, she went on patrol and told me to stay on guard, and I did. Okay, you're going to stay guarding here. I will be... And, and I'll be back in a minute, and he, once again, <laughs> just, just disappear, bolts off, looking anywhere for another bird sure. in the air. Kind of like making, like, ever-widening circles, I would imagine. Yeah. Right? That kind of thing. All right, uh, I would like you to roll perception. As the light is dimming and darkness is and cold is taking over the um, the void. Jesus. It gets very cold here. Rolled an eight. Mm. Okay, so... Do birds get an advantage on perception? Um, <laughs> they should, shouldn't they? You know what? Go so. ahead. Yeah, I, I would I, say I, you're, if you're, if you're might... looking for a long period of time, go ahead and roll with uh, advantage. I rolled a four. <laughs> right. Okay. So you're <laughs> searching for a while and you don't see anything. And it's been like an hour and it's getting very dark and you're starting to feel a little panicked. And then you hear a scream, a scream that you know very well. Is it? It's definitely your daughter. Okay, and where, I I go to where I hear the scream. you just start flying there, and you see where she is on the ground, and she is, like, shifting out of a giant owl as she's backing up, and this black panther just walks out of the darkness and is just slinking towards her. I land down in front of it, just with my hand out. I mean, like, stop. And you do, and you reach out, and you quickly realize this is no panther as four arms slide out from its sides and end in these horrible, like, tentacled suckers, and the thing shifts, and suddenly there's two of them, but there's not two of them. There's just one, but it should have been there, and now it's over here. Initiative. Oh, no. Hope that my initiative is decent, at least. <laughs> you better roll well. I rolled a six. Ooh, total? <laughs> Total. Yeah, I did not. I rolled higher. So it lunges and you move to get in between you and your kid. And now you see that it's got six legs, by the way, and is bigger than a panther should be and like has extra joints in all of its arms or legs or whatever. And it goes to attack you. It's going to do a multi attack. So two tentacles come around. Does a 17 hit you? It does not. It doesn't. Your armor just like pops up all around you. The way your armor works is both your armor and your shield are from uh, Steelbeard. They're both made out of iron wood and out of him. So they're both made out of the king of the treants. Your breast, your armor is basically a wooden neck piece that unfolds to make armor in a as a bonus action and your shield does the same thing it's just a wooden band where when you clench your fist the shield forms around it so these tentacles come in but just slam against this wood and this shield that just appears around you and then it goes to bite and it can't get through it just latches onto your a shield so now you're kind of on your back with this huge creature basically on top of you so for my turn immediately he would like to just wrench the shield so it's free and then just with the with the axe swing it down and do an ensnaring strike you'll have to put the shield away to use the axe because it's two-handed but it can just form onto your wrist as a bonus action easily so you kind of pull it to the side in fact it's kind of like on the shield so when you call it back it falls down because it didn't expect the shield to vanish and that gives you a clear shot at its neck I'll just attack it twice so just two regular attacks against it so to hit we get, I got a, a dirty 20, so 13 plus 7. You have to roll with disadvantage, because as you reach out to strike this thing, it seems to be constantly moving, like shifting in and out of space around you. All right, so I'll roll again. Uh, I got a 15 on the second. That's still going to hit. So you kind of shove it all to the side and just go to sink your axe into this thing's back. Instead of like going, no, instead of going for an overhead, he just sees it shifting like that. He's like, maybe if I swing it at the side, I'll have a better chance of hitting it. So he just does that and he gets, oh, geez. oh wait, that's a seven. Yeah, seven plus four. So he deals 11 damage with that hit, but he has another attack um, to go. So with this advantage, first hits a 23, second is a, uh, second is a 10. That one's going to miss. So it just kind of recoil and you can't quite get your second hit in there. But you do 11 points of damage and cut deep into one of its left legs. Yeah, my bonus turn is, my bonus action has already been used to to uh, 
put my shield down. So I'm standing, I'm still standing between it and my daughter. You hear a screech behind you and this giant owl is now like flapping directly above you and just yelling at this thing. And you can understand what it's saying because you can understand all animals and she's shouting, go away, mean cat, go away. As she's flapping her wings as hard as she can to kick up sand around you. Torvik just yelled back to her saying, get back to your brother. Get back to your brother. He might be in trouble. I'll be okay. Don't worry. And as you say that, the thing leaps. Does a 21 hit you? Oh, without the shield, it does. Yeah, so it lands and it like, it tried to slap you. It, it tried to make you rip along your flesh with its tentacles, was unable to get through your armor, but it did bite into your neck. You're able to pull back. It doesn't really get a strong hold on you because you can push it away, but you take, uh, one second, seven points of damage as its teeth rake along your neck. All right, that is taken out. There is a scream from this owl and she dives in, not listening to you, <sighs> and hits. She manages to hit. Hang on, wait. Okay. Yeah, she totally fucking hit, all right? So she flies in and sinks her talons into it and does some damage. The thing is hurt, but clearly not a lot. I'll just do the two attacks again, um, trying to hit it. It's right on top of me. Not using my bonus action yet till the end of my turn now because I initially started off with the shield out. Fair. Um, I'm going to try to like kick it up with my legs while swinging at it upwards. That is a 13 plus 7, a 20, and a... That's hits. 9 plus 7, 16. Still hits. Okay, so one hit there with um, 10 damage. <laughs> As it kind of uh, reels back, maybe he gets to his, his it gets like to a, a one knee up, one knee down, and swings again at it. Just hacking through this thing. Trying to avoid the back because that's where his daughter is. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah, absolutely. Just constantly putting yourself in between it and your daughter. So rolled a, uh, I rolled a 10 and a 21. So at disadvantage, I missed the second one too. <laughs> Oof, wait, a 10, and a, a 10 and a 21, 10 total? Yeah, sadly you did, missed the second one. But the first one hit for 10. Yeah, you again cut into it. It's like bleeding with weird kind of black blood that when it drips seems to move. Like the even the blood itself seems to be, seems to have this quality of displacement. Bonus action at the end of that also, by the way, he deployed it. He like... That's really good timing too, because I just rolled a 20 and I'm pretty sure that misses with your shield out, right? It does, yes. <laughs> so just as this thing comes down on top of you, that misses, it can't get the other tentacle around it. It's just biting on the shield. It looks a little wild, like it's panicked right now and just lashing out. That was his, that, that's his turn and his, um, his uh, Mur Murabi. Let's find out. I would like you to roll persuasion to see if she does what you tell her to do. God damn it. Kids are impossible. You really are. Uh, that's a 14. Okay. Yeah, she'll do it. She looks and she's like, you got this dad in bird and she flies off. And so it's just you and him right now. Looking at it now, it looks injured and he's going to just approach on it. You're starting to get words now. You can communicate with any beast and this thing is bestial enough that you're starting to understand it a bit. And it's saying words like, Not here, strange, new, scared. With this, he's gonna like, he's not, he's, I'm gonna move towards it and I'm holding my action in case it does attack me, but I yeah. gotta try to communicate with it. Just, what, where are you from? Why are you here? Wh where have you come from? And it kind of leans down like it's like like a cat ready to pounce. And it's just looking at you and its arms fold back into its body. And you get this vision of this dark world covered in jungle filled with these displacer beasts, just riddled with them, like as as common as a leopard would be in the jungle. And this whole world is just like, like there's dinosaurs and creatures you've never heard of, dragons all over. And then you see this portal, this glowing pink and purple wall with this world beyond it. And you saw the creature step through it and the door closed behind it. This would be similar to when they were first coming to the Spirit Garden and that gate opened. 
it would seem to like, as you're looking, there's this purple and pink energy crackling off of the world a storm, but it's got a dark tinge to it. Like the edges of it are a negative void. And you see little reds in reality, quickly opening and shutting all around you. And then once in a while, you'll see one stay open and then close. And perhaps this is something this creature went through. Do you want to go back to where you're from? <sighs> yes, home. And at this stage, I put my axe away and I'm... <sighs> I'd like to take out that crystal that the spider gave me. And... I guess try to think about how Zion used these and see if he can... See if it reacts at all to being in this area with the rifts opening up and closing. As you hold it, it glows in your palm and begins to levitate and turn slowly. And as it turns, spiders just spill out of it. A dozen of them run all up your arm and one runs right to your ear. Do you wish a phase? Do you wish a wish a phase? Send this creature home. Oh, yes. Hold it. Hold it to this world and throw it to what you did not understand much, understand much as myself, myself. Of course, I shall help. Myself. And the spiders pour out, like form a little arch, and they start weaving in between in the middle of nothing until this whole doorway filled with cobwebs is made in front of you, and a blue energy starts to crackle at the edges until one of these pink and purple doorways just appears in front of you and beyond it is this chaotic jungle. You can go now. It turns and it leans down it's, and its face is like kind of jumping all around but it focuses and just becomes this cat in front of you. Puts its head to your shoulder and purrs rather loudly and then turns and walks into the portal and it just collapses behind it. All the spiders rush back into your gem, and then it kind of just falls inert, but very cold in your hand. He's looking at this, and he's like, this isn't how the the, the crystals have worked before. <laughs> no, no, this is nothing at all like how it worked before. Yeah, yeah. so he, he wraps it up. He keeps it on him because he does want to investigate it, but mainly he's hoping that, you know, at this stage he's thinking that he's going to have to get the others, and he thinks that... Zion might be able to figure something out with this or of what it is. Yeah, this is not this is not good, and this is definitely the kind of not good that the others should be present for. <laughs> yeah. Completely agreed. Yes. So right. yeah, is, is this area still like like kind of opening and closing with rifts or whatever? Yeah, there is disruption and chaotic energy all around you, and it seems to be growing very From slightly, very the slowly, of the but world. yeah, like so you can see just the outline of the union at this point. It's, it's a mile high a spire on top of a gigantic rock, right? And you can see this purple energy, this purple and pink energy crackling between the stones. And that seems to be beginning at the base and ever so slowly creeping up the sides, maybe a couple inches an hour. Mm. But something is gathering here. Energy is gathering here. So, yeah. Back to his kids. All right, you over you overtake your daughter because she cannot fly as fast, as, fast as, as you a can. Hawk. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, you are. You just are faster, and so she sees you. And she's like, "Hey!" She turns into a hawk for a couple minutes to try and keep up with you. Yeah, and we will get to my son. Yep, and your son is as a bear, and he's kind of dancing, and the twins are playing instruments, and he's just like, "Uh, uh." Uh, uh, mm, 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 and doing like a little bear a dance and they all seem happy all right um geez. so yeah torvik lands hello <clears throat> um hi Javiel. Javiel, yes um i'm going to need you to turn into the smallest bear you can be again and <sighs> i don't like the small bears all right and he turns it's like this little bear like 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 you like could hold him and just you know a little teeny cub and he's like, Nadeth, lads, you're going to probably have to use some of your water to keep even those, those worms away in case they come back, but I have to go. This is be this is bigger than any of, of, of us right now, and I need to I need to get to 
my children's mother. I need to make sure everyone at the spear is okay, and I need to figure out what to do next. You'll be safe. Go with a clear conscience. You have done all you can for us. Okay. Uh, take care. Uh, if, if you ever need, or if you ever come to the spear, just ask for uh, ask for Benegris, and um, she just she she'll be able to take care of you. Just say that you know me. We know Benegris well. We shall be there if all goes well in a month's time. Okay. Uh, well, see see you hopefully, and I will take off. And I turn into, I guess I don't know, probably like a large, large eagle and just grab sure. my son. The largest, that... fastest bird you can be. Right? Yeah, exactly. Just grab them both and head back <laughs> home. Yeah, like maybe my daughter, oh, she, knows she can only be out, but like a little tiny like barn owl or something tiny. Well, she like could that. just be her too. You could be big enough just to hold her. I mean, she is only True. a They're toddler. Only four or five. You know? That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So you grab them both and you, the watch command is on regular duty, asked with you too often. So they're, they're like, pretty wee! excited. Yeah, it's really great. <laughs> uh, but you have to fly all night and dawn breaks just as you pull up to the Spear of Jarden. You're pretty tired at this point. And what is the condition here? Who am I? They are a little agitated. They can see the, that, the, what, that the world a storm has collapsed too. So as soon as you appear, they rush over. And has it collapsed at this location too, or is it still off in the distance? Everywhere. So this 12 mile high storm that cut across the entire void and above the mountains is gone. Oh, Jesus. Okay, um, I'd like to, yeah, drop the kids. Just go straight to where I benigrate is. She's in full armor. She's got crossbows. She's all fucking set. Swooping in, wings up. Break, break the speed and then just drop the kids at her feet and yeah. transform into Torvik. Big, huge hug right away. I they still. You're safe. I, I'm safe. The kids are safe. Everyone's safe. But this is not good. This is not. The world storm shouldn't fall for another six months. Something happened. There's, there's, and I point out towards the Union. Something is happening there. I don't have time to go get my friends, but I have to go. I have to go investigate. She puts down her crossbows and she pulls a silver disc out from her pocket and she runs a finger over it. And as she does, little magical energies trace her image. And then she wipes her hand over it and it vanishes again. You may contact me this way. Anywhere in this world, you may speak with me. Thank you very much, Bedegrit. I will be back. First, I do need to rest. I need I need food. I need water. They bring you food, water. They have a bed made up. Of, well, I mean, it's her bed. So, <laughs> so her bed's all made up. He'd also like to, um, you know, after he's eaten and, and drank, he'd like to try to, to reach out to Wankers. When you reach out to Oinkers, you actually talk to Oinkers. You're one of the only other people who has ever spoken with Oinkers. Normally, Oinkers is non-communicative, but Oinkers actually speaks to you. Oh, hey! Oinkers, where are you? Uh, I'm with the others. Oinkers, there's, there's been a situation at the, uh, at the World Storm. The wall is gone. I'm sure that you guys can see it too. I need you to come to this. I need you get, to get everyone to, to come to, to us or to somehow let them know. I'll get the others. I'm going to the to the Union. Do you remember the Union? Well, don't, don't do that. Don't go there. That's bad. I have to. Something's happening there. It's what made the world storm come down. I'll get the others. I'll find them. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. And then, like, and just gone. He takes as little rest as he needs just to get him, get his wits about him. And he, he goes out. He says goodbye. He... You know, make sure the kids are all right. He ruffles their hair. He's like, all right. I know you don't listen to a word I say, but you better listen to your mom. You know what? I don't know why I'm saying this. You do whatever she asks you to do. And I, I look at Benegrit and he's like, I don't know how you do it. They don't listen to anything I say. They'll do as they are told. <laughs> she says it a little sternly and they go, yeah, we will. All right. What will you do? I'm going to go to the, to the union. I'm going to see what's no, happening there. You cannot go alone. It is far too dangerous. There's someone there. Someone left from o Oasia and went out there themselves. And I think, I feel like they might be responsible for this. 
I understand. If you believe you must. I've, I've contacted Oikers uh, to, to let my friends know to come. And knowing Doro and the way he's been, you know, pushing his powers lately, I, I, feel, I feel like they can make it. All right. Hopefully sooner rather than later. Then she kind of like just leans up and she puts the sides of her hands on your face and just kind of like brushes her fingers through your beard. You better return to me. You understand? Oh, I'll be back. I can't I can't leave these two behind. How are you? Don't worry. And he just, uh, yeah, gives the two kids like a big bear hug and then, yeah, same for, for Benegrit. And then he's, he he's off. How far is the Union again? Because I remember we used um, the Godstone and Doro to get out there the last time. It's about a three-day flight. So you're going to have to rest a couple days on your way back. And um, upon upon uh, like get, uh, returning, how far up the, the, the tower is that kind of purple energy now? So as you're flying back towards this village of Oasia, and they've kind of like gotten a little bit back to normal, right? There's not bodies in the street anymore. As you land and just scan the horizon, you can see that that purple and pink energy has made it up about 10% of the Union. Okay, that's good. It's not... Yeah, okay. And uh, from there, he's... It glows and spins with energy. He takes the crystal out and he looks at this. You have a turn. You have a turn. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. He puts it back away. <laughs> Actually, no, he takes it out again. What can you tell me about what's happening out there? The storm is weakening. The union is fulfilling its purpose. Did we learn what the purpose of the union was again? As far as you know, it was made as a test for demigods, basically a crucible. But there seems to be other things at play. When you guys were in the union, each room was decorated for the gods it represented. So it might be like the god of the ocean in one room or the god of the forest in the other room. But behind these images, just behind them was always Vistrix hidden within the other designs in every single room. She had some machinations for this place, but you never figured out what they are. Yeah, and he's remembering this because I remember that they spotted that. He's going to fly... To, is there like a mountain or, or a, just a oh, landmark yeah. nearby? Yeah, so he'd like to find one of these mountains to a landmark point, something easy to find. And he takes that crystal out and he, he buries it. He hides it here because he doesn't want to bring anything related to Vistrix to a tower that's currently... Holding Vistrix, maybe? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. So, uh, and then he'd like to uh, start his trip out towards the, uh, the Union. All right, so you carefully bury this little necklace or this little pendant and you mark where it is in your mind you stand up you take one last look at this crackling union that you seem to be keep drawn back to over and over and you head straight towards it and we're gonna hold you right there So you just had this little meeting with Golden Arrow. As you kind of pull back out of it and you lean back on the railing, Autumn is just there, looking concerned. <laughs> so I just turn to him and I'm like, good evening. Good evening, cousin. And what is it that you have found out? Um, I found out some information. It's probably something um, better suited to tell the whole group if I'm going to recount it. Autumn nods. And he kind of turns and, like, who's on deck right now? Are any of you on deck? Uh, I would be. He's in the crow's nest, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, so Doro's up there. What is Haldir doing? Um, Haldir feels like... I just realized I'm not sure of the exact time. So we've... It's, like, around 9 or 10 at night. Okay. So it's it's in the evening. People are probably still trying. I mean, like, okay. Haldir feels like we need a plan of some kind. So, sure. So um, uh, Haldir's looking for Zion. Okay, excellent. So let's say that, so let's let's jump down to that. What would Zion be doing right now? Well, if it's about nine or 10, it's about Para's bedtime. So like, I'm oh, assuming yeah. that he's like 
going to bed. And then I'm yes. like, I don't want to go to bed just yet, babe. So I'm going to like go to the like laboratory. So like I'm more in the, in the, in the, in the mind of like going to go, you know, work on my batteries because that's what I, yeah, I've got those two little, two bits of, uh, uh, of, uh, Godstone that have been sanded down from those, uh, uh what were they? The, from the, the, uh, dwarves of Gaul Hadir that I stole them from. And right. so, uh, I plan, <laughs> I plan on using right. those and making some more batteries because we need some. That sounds like an excellent plan. Also, like, it's like, Para will just like, okay, whatever. Like, you know, like, whatever right, right. No, he no, no, has no, to no. say you know, in I, order to get to bed. He's like, yeah, sure, whatever, yeah, I'll yeah, do yeah. it. Yeah, I kissed him goodnight, whatever. And like, <laughs> yes. you know, it's, yeah, yeah, you do you. And, uh, you know, he's going to go to bed and that's fine. But I'm kind of a night owl, which, you know, is an unfortunate, I guess, about our relationship. But I, I just can't help it. So, like, uh, I, I'm i so excited about getting these batteries together because, you know, we need the power in order to face, you know, grabby hands and the things to come. So I will be headed to my laboratory and to be, like, starting to siphon off little bits of, uh, of Godstone uh, uh, dust and, uh, you know, measuring it out and chopping Popping it up, you know, just just right in my little meth lab. Perfect. So as you're in your little meth lab Mm -hmm. and you're just like, it takes a bit of time. Like you can't just jump in. You have to set up a few things, get a Bunsen burner going. Like there's a whole process to get your lab going. It's about an hour to be, you know, be, you know, before you can even do lab stuff. Right. And just as you're ready, just as you're in that zone, there's a knock at your door. (laughs) Para, are you still awake? Um, I, uh, open the door. How do you open the door? Of course it is. Oh, well. I feel like, I feel, I feel like Cold Deer is more of like, I was, also, I was like, I feel like he's more of like a subtle knock, not like a bam, bam, bam. It's like a <laughs> kind of knock. <laughs> ah, <laughs> <did he? laughs> Just a gracing of your knuckles, yeah. Ah, yes, my gracious lord. How may I help you? <laughs> you see the sarcasm there. <laughs> not the time. <laughs> what hold? Would Hold Deer even acknowledge it, or just be like, "Okay, good, he's learning." Good, he's and learning. Just, like, how to, how to just, just carry right into it. <laughs> um, I think, regardless, it's not it's not the time to bring it up, <laughs> right. especially because Zion's the only, Zion's like the one person on this team that uh, Hold Deer feels like a real adult, you know, right. and well, that actually knows what's happening. Well, uh, I was clearly annoyed because I was in the middle of like, just, yeah. Mm, Pouring this little bit into 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 the into the beaker, and so uh, yeah, as so I set down my stuff, how can I help you? We need a plan. Uh, for some reason, being around you people, things tend to happen very quickly, as if there's some kind of deity driving this plot. So, <laughs> no thanks. Uh, you can scratch that out. But um, we need we we need a plan. We we don't know what could happen between now and us arriving at Sky Haven, so it, it would behoove us all to sooner rather than later come up with at least some type of way that we're going to start dealing with these other demigods. I completely agree. Right now, in fact, I am working on uh, creating batteries for all of us so that we will all be able to use powers that would never have uh, access to and use them in tandem uh, to fight these <laughs> deities that we uh, have to fight. So, yeah, we've got to come up with a plan. It's true. Uh, I figured tomorrow we'll start fresh and we will create a, uh, a war room or we'll ask uh, Steelbeard to do that and uh, we'll, uh, we'll formulate a better plan. Right now, I'm doing what I have to do. Paris sleeping. Uh, I suggest you... Um, Meditate and prepare yourself mentally, and tomorrow, yes, we will do so. Please come up with any plan that you have. Though, if you have anything to spitball right now, I'm totally all ears. I tend to forget people need to sleep, uh, so right. it's like God. Why would you fucking care? It's an elven so thing. <laughs> but I'm I'm up for a couple of hours if you wanted to talk. I mean. <laughs> What we're faced against right now, of course, we know the pretender of Barros, the, we call him Grabby Hands, we don't have a name for him yet. Um, he will be able to merge flesh and use our own powers against us, and so he's pr- perhaps our greatest enemy. We have this Balam that you spoke of. I know nothing of her other than being a Salad, which I've learned somewhat about in my studies. Um, but uh, as to what she can do as a sewer goddess, I have no idea. Um, <laughs> and uh, we have, uh, did you say Bam Bam? Something like that? 
Bang Bang. His name is Bang Bang. <laughs> bang Bang. Oh, Bang Bang. Okay. Well, right. that works too. Uh, uh, you were nodding like, yeah, that was it. <laughs> I, was like, I, was thinking, I was like, that sounds familiar. Oh, wait a minute. No, that's the Flintstones character. <laughs> I know. My, <laughs> my character is actually called there, Bang Bang. At all the names. Like, <laughs> you know, Blam Blam. You know, Pow Kapow. You know that guy. Pow Kapow. I hate that guy. Yeah, we're just going to call him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> He can apparently use, or uh, they can apparently use uh, whatever powers that you can use somehow. And um, then there's uh, Tiago Reese, the only one that we actually, you know, know. And uh, <laughs> he wears a mask, he can appear as other people, and he's really good at shooting things. So, so the flesh molder. Yes, he is our primary opponent. Do you have... He cannot be touched, correct? Anytime anybody has attempted to, they have been left severely mauled. Or marred. (laughs) Have you had any success in fighting him? I guess we have had success in fighting him, now that I think about it. Because... I believe that we have thwarted his plans on numerous occasions, yes. Which I'm sure has pissed him off. But I doubt that we've actually caused him any physical pain. Doro has. Doro did the um, thunderstone against the ears and that was effective. So yes, I wish we were side, having this side con- note. <laughs> Sidebar, you know, I, I wish we were having a conversation, but I don't know about that. So, uh, Zon- <laughs> so Zon- and Rina and, uh, and <laughs> Rina and You'll have to cover that anyway. in, a deep, in a debrief. When we have our Zion's going to have rules. Yeah. Zion's going to have rules for like a whole debrief. Like, like whenever <laughs> you guys come back in the buddies, he's, he's, he's got a clipboard out. He's yes. ready to go. It's initiative for talking to each other. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so maybe, maybe then the others will have. I know, I know for a fact that uh, Doro and Rena have faced him. I know for a fact that... <sighs> Torvik, you've never met him, but uh, an old friend of ours, as well as Doro and Para, faced him first, and they didn't fare very well. They were only lucky enough that Doro began to manifest his powers and was able to teleport away. Paul Deere fought um, Cyril as well, because you fought the flesh monster monster. at Para's house. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, Para and I uh, faced against the flesh monster, but that was not necessarily him. It was his creation. So apparently he's able to create these monstrosities outside of his own self and use them against us. All right. So maybe I'll do is trying to think, all right, this is is fine, but maybe it's time that we, maybe this is a conversation that we should have with everybody. I agree. Uh, But one thing I want to know so they were all able to use some sort of device using, I don't know, the same technology that I'm developing right now uh, to be able to teleport away very quickly. So those devices uh, pose a danger to us. I don't know what else they can do. But if we were to be able to remove those devices from them and take that out of play, that would give us an advantage or at least take away their advantage. Is it possible that they have the same ability to create these batteries that you have? Yes, especially if they have the advantage of being from the future, something you know more about than I. So is it possible, I wonder, if they've taken Doro's powers and infused them into the crystals that they have in their heads? Which doesn't necessarily bode well for our chances. Yes, that is correct. It is possible in the future they've killed Doro and taken his power. A future that we must avert. That's true. And we know we can. Because I killed Bang Bang. (laughs) Time is malleable, as we have all come to learn. Okay. All right. Do your work. It is important. Yes, I'll do some work and then I'll go to bed. I'll see you tomorrow, Haldir, and we'll discuss all of this in front of everyone. Yes. I want to go um, see if I can, because I haven't actually tried to connect using my camera abilities at all. So I want to see if that's possible. I know we're out in the middle of the ocean, right? But I, I don't really know what it can do or if it's possible that it can do something in, in a world where there's 
no you know electric seeing devices or whatever so just kind of want to meditate on that for a while after going back to the room so how so yes yeah, so so you go back to your room you get into your meditative stance uh i would like you to tell me what you're trying to do exactly are you trying to reach out for a network are you trying to look for cameras what did, what did, what are you doing so i want to reach out to see if i can sense some kind of network some kind of like you said cameras or if i can create some type of seeing device on my own that i can connect to myself like you know some kind of either invisible floating eye or or some other type of camera that can place pla uh, places i would like you to roll your divinity uh, so I rolled a 19 plus three gives me a, a 22. So just like with every other divinity, cameras are a concept. It's not the equipment. It's not the network. It's the concept of looking at something, of capturing an image with a device. You can, when you focus your divinity, and it takes you some time the first time. You're able to make this small pink and purple swirling ball. It's not actually there. If you were to look in your reflection in a mirror, you would not see this ball in your hand. But when you look at it, you can see this as a camera. And were you to leave this in a room, you could see this image, connect with it within a certain range. It'd be close enough to it, but you could connect to it and see through this small divine ball that you've made as if it were a camera no audio but you can see through it that's very cool any way of, re of like saving the recording there's no memory connected to it either you turn it on and you look at it right but uh maybe you could figure that out in the future as you're playing with that you reach out a little further and there's another camera on the ship. Oh, that's interesting. Where? Uh, do you want to look through it? Yeah, I'd like to look. Yeah, yes, I want to go see. Yeah, I want to see what that camera sees. Turn it slowly as it pans over the room and you quickly realize that you must be in Automil's room. That's interesting. And there's no sound, right? This no camera, sound, this camera doesn't just have any video. sound. Yeah, just video. Is Automil in, in his room? Automil is not in his room right now. Is there, is there anything weird about his room in particular? Uh, nothing that you can see. I mean, he, he didn't really have much. So it's basically just empty. So who else would have the capability to create cameras besides literally the one person that I killed however many times ago? So automil has got a camera in his room. He's not, I mean. Roll me, roll me an arcana while you're thinking about that. That's a six, so 11 total. Yeah, you're not sure. Uh, it doesn't feel the same as what you've made, but that's all you can really tell. It's very interesting. Um, it's interesting for two reasons. The first is that it's it's in Automil's room. So, like, would he right. have placed it there himself? Um, and if he would have placed it there himself, I, I imagine it would have been to watch to see if anybody entered the room. So it would have been pointed at his shit, you know? Right. Not just not just not just at the not wall. Not just against yeah. the wall. Um, what I mean. Does he know it's there? If it's in his, if he didn't place it there, he probably doesn't know it's there. But it's also like pointed at the fucking wall, which I don't get. All right, so then can, uh, first of all, make sure that there's no other cameras on the ship. Yep, that was it. That's the only one besides the one you besides the one you made. So I, I want to keep keep this camera pointed towards like you know his his stuff, and yeah. me and meditate and just wait. I okay. guess because we're not doing anything else tonight, so right, I'll hang out. Okay, so you just kind of like, do you keep an eye on Automil's camera? Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So that's what I want to do: is meditate and keep and keep the eye on the camera. Yes. All right. That's what you're. That's what you're doing for the next couple hours. Uh, then let's let's jump back up to Arena, and you are on deck. Uh, you just had a nice little talk with Oinkers, and Automil is there. You just kind of like pacing back and forth on the deck, looking out over the water. Okay, so Rena is just like, she just kind of props herself up like she sits on the railing of the ship and she just kind of looks and she goes, you seem a little, I don't know, I'd say distracted, maybe anxious. 
As you're saying this, he's literally tapping his fingernails against the railing and he just kind of stops. <laughs> and he nods. I am at ill ease. About what? Us, our divinities, everything. About the person you met? No. I am worried about us. I am worried about where we are headed. I am worried about these visions we have had. But what do you, what's the major concern? Just the fear of the unknown? That we cannot stop it. That there are things in play beyond our control. Maybe this comes from my divinity, Armiel, but past can change, they can always change. Past can always change. And much has changed. But I still feel like we are far behind. And what would you do to help that? It's like, this is why I'm upset. I have no answers. Armiel, why are you here? Why did you come? Why did you leave the forest? I mean, I know why I'm here. I never came back. And therefore, I just changed my route of what I was doing. You, on the other hand, left the forest, which is... With someone of your position, that doesn't normally happen. I came looking for you all. I came looking for clues as to where you had gone and what had happened. You could have asked me what happened. I could have asked you what happened had you bothered to contact us or tell us that you had left the tower or give us any information whatsoever on what had happened to you. I wrote you a letter. Why didn't you write? Yes, you did write a letter. <laughs> I did write a letter. It was yeah. forever ago. But it I... was forever ago. Yeah. Would you remember exactly when that was? No, I'm trying to think. I just know that I sent. It was back when like Torvik was around because Torvik. I made. Torvik it was send before the letter. he went to the spear. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. How did you send that letter? I think I, I think I got um, I got Torvik to like get one of the peregrines or something to like sure take it or yes. something like that. Did you? Did you write that 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 letter to Automil? Yes, it was it was to him. Okay, excellent. Automil frowns and looks at you. You sent me a letter. I sent you a letter ages ago. I did not receive it. Uh, out of character. Wow. Wow. You don't say. The elves you betray us again? No. The elves within nah. the elves betray us? <gasps> no, it's just a shitty peregrine. It's a peregrine that literally flew over the forest and somebody said, <laughs> Dinner. <laughs> exactly. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it had a note. Weird. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Would have sent him a better bird if it was important. This is an automobile <laughs> guy, whatever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Armiel, when did you leave the forest? That's a good question. How long have you been out of the Union? Oh my Hot God. <laughs> just How a long has it been, just Michael? A minute, just a minute. Michael's yeah, Michael will know exactly. The, the timesheet. We think it's long, but see, you stop us every two minutes. To, like, right. No, it hasn't been that long. Rather than letting us just like grow up, I'm still freaking 17. Yeah. I, I, I want to be a major. World, I don't do want to be a minor and anymore. Save them and find these and then kill that guy and that guy anymore. and that guy. <laughs> first of all, first of all, there's no fucking way in a fantasy <laughs> setting that 18 is considered an adult. I mean, there's, there's no way. 33. Okay. Let's see. Right. You guys die at like 35, right? Hall Deer is like a grandfather. <laughs> no, I plan to live forever and to never age. Yeah, right, of course. God, and, and to stop eating and shitting. So Good luck that, that is one. when I would. Oh, why would you want to stop eating though? Like, I get the shitting part. Like, well, fuck, no, but because I consider eat. that very mortal. And That's like, uh, I, I want to no need, longer. You have to go satisfy. sion has got such a weird view of being a god, man. <laughs> yeah, no, like I would not make a good like Valhallen god, like because they're always like having their feasts and things. No, totally. no, no, no. 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 Not for Michael. I Let's want if, if I require sustenance, I am a creature of death. Yes. I need nothing. I must right. feed on your soul. <laughs> right. I need the only food I, I need, need only your off. face. <laughs> yes. The characters pathetic dream away. You're supposed to be steepling your fingers when you say yes, that. Yes, yes. Third of guy done. Paul Deere's like, well, I can make I can work with this. <laughs> this right. is fine. Keep your so what if we just kill everyone? Are you How's taking that? resumes? 
<laughs> <laughs> great fire, great fire. Ergon, Ergosh. Okay, so it looks like we left on the 3rd of Gaidon. The fact that you keep track of the dates, like, wow. I just have events. It's the best. I just have events. <laughs> it was like three months ago, basically. Perfect. Uh, yeah, two, okay. Yeah, two so and a half, three months ago. It? <laughs> Automil ended up back exactly where you guys were. So Automil went straight back to River Run. From River Run, he immediately went back, was like half a day's a journey, and informed everyone of exactly what had happened. Uh, well, not everyone, just the people who needed to know exactly Hagen, what had happened. Hagen figured what out had what happened to you. Yeah. That you got that, you know, he was pulled into the union with you when he was sent back out. You didn't come back out. He assumed you were still in there. And after that, it was a hunt for where you all were. Uh, they can't use the blue mud trick any anymore because that whatever what that was, that got wiped out in the union. So that's out. Oh, they couldn't track you any more. So they sent a couple people out to find you and actually to find Cebu as well, because he's gone missing. So they've been looking for Cebu, looking for you. And that's just what he was out doing along with others. OK, but does he mention the whole like, didn't he go to uh, the freaking volcano or whatever? Did, did he do that or did that happen the way volcano. before? Volcano. Like, no. like when there was Haldir was like, or not Haldir, sorry, um, Kadar. They, like, chopped the trees or whatever. Wasn't Armiel there? Wait, no. That might be a vision. Was that- Automil was there. Okay. So there was uh, – so Automil was at home, right, uh, while they were they, – he didn't leave immediately, right? He was at home long enough to help them deal he with Kadar. He had to do Kadar. paperwork and, you know, he had to yeah, switch, yeah, his, exactly. he had to switch right. his position you know. around and, you know. Yeah. Yeah, had to get re-upped, right? And, like, he was there uh, to help – to help defend from Khao Gun when they and some of the dwarves of Gaul Hadir came to steal some trees. And they kick they killed the shit out of them. <laughs> it was brutal, frankly. Does he mention that at all or no? Sure, absolutely. He gives okay. you a full recount of everything he's been doing. He didn't he didn't hold anything back. He's not very, very good at lying. So he just he just tells you everything. Since we've met back up with him. Has he used his divinity in front of me? Yeah, because he used it when he zipped in and out. Uh, he basically vanished when he was talking to you. And then when he came back, oh, okay, uh, yeah. he zipped in too. So okay. yeah, he's 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 run fast around you. Yeah. Um, is there like any way for me to just like quickly check like that his divinity is still his and he just has the one? Like, is there like... How would you do that? Uh, yeah, I guess I would need like... I would you need, need a way to see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I mean, you know, you get Doro's spyglass. Because <laughs> I just want to make sure, like, Rena's a little confused now because he didn't get the letter. So she's, like, concerned. that You want to make sure it's him. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. In this world, that makes total fucking sense. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, like, part of me's thinking, because, like, I know Armiel and I have all these, like, inside things with each other. That there's probably some saying that we have. I'm sure. You know what? In fact, I'm sure you guys have one. Yeah. Because I'm sure that the idea of an imposter especially with dryads and everything else has come up. So if you want to hit him with the, with the keywords, he throws them right back at you. Okay. So we, we double yeah. check that. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, um, the elf enjoys apples at midnight. <laughs> this is like the, ah. this is like the Tumblr joke, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's, I mean, as far as you can tell, it's, it's definitely out of meal. Okay. Just double checking. But I don't know if they can, like, grab memories and some oh, shit. Oh, that's know? an interesting like, point. Yeah. yeah. You don't know. I mean, you don't know what he can do. I mean, the things you've seen so far have been pretty clumsy. Uh, but they've gotten better. Yeah. Plenty of flesh homunculuses he's, he's running around. He's doing the same thing so, we're doing. Yeah. He's sitting there training. And Everyone's improving. Know. Yeah. So. I can't wait to fight his foot soldiers. His flesh foot soldier people. Right. To they're fight gonna be, They're just going to be, like, <laughs> it's going to be gross because they're all going to be, like, different body parts. They're going to be, like, a oh, thing of legs. <laughs> thing of ears. Oh, it's the arm. Yeah, yeah right. it's the arms. It's eyeballs. Oh, that one's going to be disgusting. I can't wait. That's, like, a beholder, but, like, grosser. Like, I don't know. Like, just. It's to all eyes. <laughs> I just spit it out to him. Like, Armiel, who were you meeting? You haven't been out of the forest in so long. How did they know you were coming? How did they know you were going to be at Hawk? Like, she's just like, she's, you could just, it's just rattling it all off because she's just sitting there like. They did not know. And I met with no one. I sent a bird back to the forest. Back to the forest. So they know about all of this? That I have met you and that I have found you? Yes, of course. I told them immediately. You told Hagen? Yes. When'd you send that? <laughs> when he went off. So like, uh, like, uh, like a day ago, okay, not so even like a day he, ago, okay. like six hours ago. But he didn't, <laughs> like, he didn't, he sent it before he went and saw like Balaam and like. 
bang bang and all that stuff. Right. Correct. Okay. He said it before that. Okay. Yep. Cool. 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 Yep. So that information has not gotten out. All he's all he basically said was, "I have found them. We are in Hog's Feet," and that was pretty much it. Okay. <laughs> you know, he would have sent that before Haldir and Caitlin got back, mm-hmm. because he left before that fight went down. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so that would, so he basically said, I found, you know, Rena. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and <laughs> also, you know, contact. right, that's it. That's basically all he said. I found Rena and some, of, and some of the others. He waited for a response. That's why he was gone for a while. Yeah. He didn't get one, and then he came back. Does he tell me that he didn't get one? Yes, okay. he tells you everything. Okay. <laughs> Just got to figure out how forthcoming, you know, all of this is. Uh, Again, he feels very forth, forthcoming. He, he's, he's obviously bothered by things. Yeah. Like he's troubled, but he's forthcoming. Uh-huh. I asked, um, so, Armiel, does it bother you that you didn't get a response? It is far. And magic is strained. But yes, it does. Well, I would say keep your worry to a normal level. That is pretty high, but I shall. <laughs> Stress is part of the job. We learned how to manage it a long time ago, Armiel. <laughs> it is, and I believe I shall relieve myself of some of it. I am going to go meditate. Do you need anything else from me? No, not this evening. But, like, while he's walking away, Rena's doing, like, an up and down of, like, does he have everything that he had, slash, is there anything new that I see, like, on his person in general? Before he leaves, he just kind of stops and he gives you a smile and just places a hand gently on your shoulder. It's good to see you. It's good to see you again. And he, and he nods and he walks so uh, he walks away. And again, Audible doesn't like travel with much. Yeah. And it doesn't look like there's anything obvious. Like there's not like, a new shiny cape or anything like that. Okay. And does he have, does he have like my bow, like my version of the magic bow? Does he have that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. He definitely has his, he, he, he has his guardian bow, his guardian armor and his guardian quiver with him. Okay. Does he have the cloak as well? The like leaf yeah. cloak? Okay. Absolutely. All right. Just Not sure wearing it at the moment, but yeah, yeah. absolutely. Sure. And he has a mask and a love note from Tiago. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, time to stab him. <laughs> <laughs> It's a polyamorous re- relationship. <laughs> God damn it. I mean, good for him, but also fuck. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Armiel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he just kind of walks away and goes down below deck. And then it's just you on the deck with, um, uh, what are you doing in the crow's nest, Doro? What are you, what are you doing right now? Uh, so I've been trying to keep an eye out for the ship that we're chasing. Sure. Uh, I'm also trying to look for other ships that may be further along than us in the sure. interest of potentially teleporting us to that ship or something. And then going okay. from there, I don't know. So you just keep watch all night. Is that yeah. what you're okay. going to so, get tired and pass out? <laughs> yeah. Hold on. So yeah. like what I do, what Rena does at some point when she's like, it's been a bit, cause I assume she just stays up on the deck for a little while. She's sure. going to acrobat, acrobat herself up to the crow's nest. And she's going to be like, Dora, you need to sleep. Uh, Dora's looking out through a spyglass uh, at the hor- the dark horizon, are the stars out? Oh yeah, it's a full moon night. It is a bright lit night. Uh, you can see pretty clearly, in fact. But there's I don't see anything right. On right now, it's just you all and the ocean alone. At least you know for like twenty miles, twenty miles until the curvature of the earth. you know. You know what I mean? You can see as far as the curvature of the earth. Is the Earth even? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's a good point, actually. Is the Earth the same? Is it, I, you know is what? It, is it round? You know what? Is there I a curvature? Bought, yeah. I bought this. Yes, it is round. And okay. I I bought this oh, so program uh, that like models galaxies that allows you to you know set up different planets and different atmospheres and like have different. Because my whole I, my whole idea was I wanted Cal Gunn to have two suns, right? And I and I wanted to model that to see how it changed the seasons and all that. It's so fucking complicated. It's so fucking complicated to the point where it's like my brain fell out of it. Like they have a they have a setup that shows you how Westeros works, how they can have. So basically, it's two it's two suns constantly circling each other, right? And then the Earth go, and then Westeros goes around that, and because the gravity pulls on it in different ways, like when the suns are in different positions, it's either closer or further 
from both of them. So that's why you can have three years of summer and then a couple of years of winter in a row. And that's, and they like made it work, but it's like, it makes your brain fall out of your head. So I said, I said fuck it. It's just like earth. That's how it's going to be. <laughs> yeah, how do people figure that out? My God. They're smarter than I am. That's how they do it. So I collapsed my spy glass and turn back to Rena and say, uh, we have to find Caitlin. I understand that we need to find Caitlin, but I only sleep for four hours, therefore you need eight. So you can sleep in the crow's nest here, but I'm going to make you sleep. Wait, what? <laughs> it's either you Stop. go to bed or I hit the back of your head. Wait, you too? <laughs> just, 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 just like pulls it. I sleep here and just like pokes him. <laughs> uh, I allow that. <laughs> you do? Sure. What? You're like, Why? I can't That's sleep. Funny. Shoot me. Sure. Okay. No, no, I no, just... no, 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 no. I don't say I can't sleep. Shoot me. I'm like, <laughs> no. I, I'm looking for Caitlin, and Rena just goes. <laughs> and I fall over and I fall asleep. Yeah. Thump. That's yeah. fine. I'm fine with that. <laughs> Little half legs out cold. Yeah. I like set him up, you know, in the crow's nest so he's comfortable. I like put I will I've... also even say the spy glass rolled out of my hand towards like the center of the crow's oh, nest. Oh, hell yes. Is our meal? Grab it and play with it as much as you want. There Is you Armiel go. still on the deck at all? Uh, let's say that Automiel paused and looked out over the water before he went downstairs. So yes, <laughs> Automiel still spyglass, on immediately the deck. Immediately turns to Armiel to see what he looks like through it. Yep. So the god of speed, what? the god of earth. Bastard! You look at Automiel, and you and you stare at him, and you can see the speed energy around him. You can you can. You can see his divinity that you've seen before, and that's all you see. There's nothing else going on. There's nothing hidden. There's no extra abilities. It's, it's just Automiel. Okay. And then does I do I? Can you see magical stuff with it, or can you? Yeah. Just see? No, just divinity. Okay, just divinity. Okay. Yeah. Just, just wondering. Uh, yep. <laughs> slowly trying to metagame, but no, just kidding. So just you miss his wish <laughs> ring. You got yeah. You got uh, everything else. Okay. So I grab that, and then I'm just gonna I'm just gonna be like checking it out. I'm gonna be like searching. You know, I'm gonna keep an eye what he was doing it's a really good uh spyglass and you can see for a while and again it's just it's a clear night in all directions and there's not another ship within sight okay. <laughs> see rena like low-key would want to try like some kind of aspect of like doro's travel when he's like if it like the divinity is still present even when like people are asleep, but she's like, no, no, that's another day, <laughs> different, yeah. different time. I mean, <laughs> and you all wake up in hell. Oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, I had a plan. Yeah. <laughs> so, at any point during this evening, are you going to take your four? Because, like, you know, as you're doing this, a steelbird's face kind of turns around in, in the mast in front of you, and he's like whispering. He's like, "I'll get a blanket." He like pulls like a little leaf, a blanket up. Yeah. But Rita, you should sleep as well, or rest, or. Or if he, he would know what else to do. You should rest as well. Uh, um, so I'm going to let Doro get like seven or eight hours. And then I'm going to take like a nice four hour nap at some point. We're going to like train. I'm going to wake him up at some point, essentially, and be like, sure. get back on your post. But like, you know, and then, you know, I'm going to go down to like my room to sleep. But like, I'm going to make sure he gets enough time that he's like, you know, human rested, you know, okay, <laughs> then- perfect. So while you're up there then, and Hall and Hall dear, while you're in your room meditating, and as Automil gets back to his, and you see Automil come back into his room and take a seat, and you see the eye turn to follow, or the camera turn to follow Automil as he walks into his room. Like you didn't, I didn't do, that. do that, correct? And you can sense someone. There's a connection, and you can. And you're starting to follow that connection back when a spike of pain shoots through your head and there's and fire erupts all around you. Rena in the crow's nest, fire explodes all around you and you're just racked with pain. There's a scream from down below as Automiel collapses to his knees inside his room. And then the entire ship shudders to a halt and this booming roar comes from Steelbeard as he's crying in pain as well. Yeah. 
Thank you for joining us for Season 6, Episode 6 of God's Fall. Can't wait for more? Check out patreon.com slash God's Fall, where you can listen to the next episode right now and early releases of all future episodes for just five bucks a month. We're also live twice a month on twitch.tv slash God's Fall with Escape the Union, where five young demigods try and survive the newly constructed tower of the God of Order. Check video on demand episodes on youtube.com slash God's Fall. And we'll see you next time in the world of the five kingdoms. Thank you.